Throughout history, countless creative and productive people have lived differently than most other people. Either by design or completely unknown to them, their living and workspaces have positively impacted how they think and feel. On every continent of the world can be found famous homes associated with the brilliant people who built them, or lived there, or did both. Everyone has heard of Elvis's Graceland and Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, George Washington's Mount Vernon, Michael Jackson's Neverland Valley Ranch. Sarah Winchester's house. Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water. Gianni Versace's Casa Casuarina. William Randolph Hearst's San Simeon. Hugh Hefner's Playboy Mansion. John Lennon's Tittenhurst Park, and so many others. The names of many men and women and their homes are easily recognisable. But Friar Park is not a household name, although one of its owners was and still is. Musician George Harrison purchased Friar Park in 1970. He neither designed nor played any role whatsoever in its construction. Before he was even born, Friar Park was already well known around the world by garden enthusiasts for over half a century. Though he did not build it, he did consider himself to be its caretaker and so that is what he did. He took care of it. He nursed the estate back to health, knowing it would outlive him, and that it would be appreciated in the future as much as it was appreciated in the past. And so back to the past is where we shall go. London in the mid to late 1800s was a world quite unlike the world we know today. Looking at it through a daydreaming filter, it was a time and place where ladies and gentlemen were treated with respect and dignity, while men and women aspired to look and act and be the best they could, and rise above their social ranks through hard work and perseverance. It was also a time where brilliant men accumulated fabulous wealth. One of them was an English gentleman named Frank Crisp. Born in London on St Crispin's Day, October the 25th, 1843, Crisp was an incredibly successful lawyer who was a partner in the firm of Ashurst, Morris and Crisp. The firm located for decades at 17 Throgmorton Avenue, is still in existence today. Before and after he made partner, Frank Crisp was the firm's most valuable asset. It was he who personally handled some of their most important clients. It was Crisp, for example, who drew up the contracts for the construction of battleships for the Japanese Navy by Great Britain as well as the cutting of the Cullinan diamonds. And the formation of the Anglo-Persian Oil Company, later known as British Petroleum. Among his many interests, Crisp was the treasurer and later a vice president of the Linnean Society a learned society dedicated to the study and dissemination of information concerning natural
dock brick, with stucco being used on the windows, doors, architraves and string courses. It was a big house that was built to accommodate a large family with a substantial number of servants. Each villa had a semicircular carriage drive in the front, as well as a substantial garden in the back. But, like other English gentlemen, he desired to escape the hustle and bustle of London and go to a country home where he and his family, which included his wife, two daughters and four sons, could spend their weekends and host parties and special events. In the mid to late 1800s, Henley was one of the most beautiful places to have a country home. Among the many estates in the area could be found Badgemore House, Forley Court, Greenlands, Grays Court, Harpston Court, Hewenden, Park Place, Stonor Park, West Wickham Park, and many others. Henley became world famous in the year 1851, when Prince Albert became the patron of their rowing event, which began 12 years earlier in the year 1839. In 1891, the Kelly's directory described Henley on Thames as being the prettiest summer retreat in the county, surrounded by handsome villas and plantations a very favourite and fashionable place to resort. And it is because of its picturesque views and its fashionable offerings and its magnificent homes and gardens and its close proximity to London, so many of its other natural advantages, that Frank Crisp chose Henley-on-Thames to build his country estate. 